Today, I'm gonna to give you five important keys to staying patient in a trial. And if you stick around, I'm gonna share personal testimony and how I did this and how the Lord strengthened me. This is gonna be a good one. Just gonna wait around. Wait around a little bit. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to be streaming, I think, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, every week, 11, 12 30. Around that time. All right. Let me go ahead and get started. Five keys. Well, I'm going to go over a few verses real quick, and then I'll go over the five keys, and then I'm going to go over some verses after that. What's up, Rita? How are you doing today? This will stay. So I'm going to go over Isaiah 40, 31. And he says, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So when we wait on the Lord, we're waiting on something that does not, his strength is not weary. He doesn't grow weary. It says this in verse 28. Have you not known? Have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. So when we're waiting on the Lord, it says that his, his knowledge is unsearchable. We're waiting on something that doesn't grow weary. When we rely on something that doesn't grow weary, we ourselves will not grow weary. So when we walk, when we walk in the Spirit, according to Galatians 5.16, we not, we're not going to grow weary. There's going to be a boost of strength while you're waiting. And this happened to me today. I'm feeling real, real weak right now. But the Lord strengthened me today. Gave me enough strength to come on here. Preach to y'all today. So we're waiting on something that is going to renew us. Paul says is that our outward man is perishing, but our inward man is being renewed day by day. Our spirit is being renewed and strengthened every day. God is not some God who sits up in heaven and is old. He's not an old man. He doesn't grow weary. Our God is a God of strength. Paul says that when I'm weak, he is strong. Christ told Paul, in your weakness, I am strong. Because when your flesh is weak, your spirit man is stronger. Your spirit man is stronger. So I'm going to start going over these. The first one. How to continue, how to persevere. While remaining patient in the Lord. Waiting for a promise. Waiting for something. And if you're a Christian, you've experienced this before. Whether you're a serious or a non-serious Christian. Everyone prays for things and everybody waits for prayers to be answered. Psalm 27. Seek Him. Seek him while you're waiting. Seek him while you wait. Seek him while you wait. Seek him while you wait. This is very, very important. So in Psalm 27, it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they stumbled and fell. And skipping a couple of verses, David goes on to say, One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to inquire in his temple. So Paul often went into God's temple because he wanted to seek the Lord. But not only that, but because he wanted, he wanted to be with God. But even more than that, he was going through trouble. And he knew that God was the only one that could deliver him out of his trouble. He, look, go but look at a... 25 18 he says look on my affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins consider my enemies for they are many and they hate me with cruel hatred so when god when david sought the lord he was delivered from his troubles so whether whether you're praying for pain or you're you're praying for financial stability if you seek the lord in your trouble he will deliver you out of your troubles for in the time of my trouble you shall hide me in 
and his pavilion in the secret place of his tabernacle. You shall, he shall hide me. He shall set me up high upon a rock. He will set you up high. And his prayer will be delivered to you. And he says, now my head. So this is after he sought the Lord. He said, now, and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies and all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. So every time in Psalms, it's funny because when we look at Psalms, we look at the flux, like how much the scripture actually fluctuates because David would battle. He would be in pain. He'd be battling and then he would rejoice because the Lord delivered him. He said, whom shall I fear? And eventually David came to realize that if I just seek the Lord, I'm going to be delivered and all my prayers are going to be answered by the Lord. He says, hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me when you said, seek my face. My heart said, seek to you or said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. So when you seek the Lord, God will not hide his face from you. He will not hide his face from you. He will not hide his face from you. He will set you up high if you diligently seek the Lord. He says, do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your way, O Lord. So David says, when, my, when other people, the people that I most care about, forsake me, God will not forsake me. If you seek the Lord, he will not forsake you. Daniel 10, we're going to look at Daniel 10. This is key number two, fast, fasting, 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 fasting. Seek the Lord relentlessly. And we're going to go look at Daniel 10. We're going to go look at Daniel 10 for this. This is a perfect example. David or Daniel was waiting on a prayer. He was seeking, he was seeking um, guidance from the Lord. So he fasted and I've done this before. Um, I had an important um, decision to make. Um, around one or two months ago, um, I was supposed to go to Colorado and go work somewhere. And I fasted to see what the Lord wanted me to do. And um, through that fast, I actually got an answer from the Lord. I got a vision. And um, he told me to stay here and preach. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now. So when we fast, our prayers get answered. Not immediately, but we get guidance. We get guidance. And this is what it says. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food. No meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Now, on the 24th day of the first month, I was by the side of great river. So he was fasting for 40, 24 days or 21 days. Sorry. I lifted up my eyes and looked and looked and looked and behold, sorry, a certain man clothed in linen and linen was worn by priests and angels whose waist was girded with a gold of upaz. His body was like beryl. His face was like appearance of lightning. His eyes like torches of fire and torches resemble God in the Old Testament. His arms and feet were like burnished bronze in color and the sound of his words like a voice of many, like a multitude. And this is the same way that Jesus is described in Revelation 1.8, I believe. Or one or two. And he says, Daniel... And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision for men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great terror fall upon them and that they fled to hide themselves. So they were so terrified. And these were not some guys. These were guys that were with Daniel. They were, these were holy men. They were so terrified by what they saw. They actually ran away. And this was the son of God who appeared to Daniel. Same, same description of Revelation. Same one. You can go compare it. Therefore, I was left alone. And when I saw this great vision and no strength remained in me. So Daniel said, when no strength remained in me, God showed up and delivered me. Yet I heard the sound of his words. And while I heard the sound of his words, I was in a deep sleep on my face with my face to the ground. Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was, so he was sent to Daniel while he was waiting. So Daniel had been waiting for 21 days. Daniel had been waiting for 21 days and suddenly this man with the eyes like fire, this this God man appeared to Daniel who said, Oh, Daniel, greatly beloved. When you wait on the Lord, someone will be sent to you. You are greatly beloved. God has not forsaken you. And when you're without strength, the God, God will deliver you. And he said, I stood trembling. And then he said, Do not fear, Daniel, for, for, 
For from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before God, your God, I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. So God, even God was withstood by these principalities. But he said, from the very first day that you began to pray, and I heard your words, I was sent to you. Your, God is not slow to respond to your prayers. He hears you. From the very first day, angels are sent out to respond to your prayers. Hallelujah. Someone say amen. Your prayers, God is not slow to answer your prayers. But he's trying to fulfill his will. But he's also being withstood by angels and principalities that he has to fight through. Continue to pray. Continue to intercede. Fast. Fast. He's, and, and he said, the day... Um, you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before God. And a way that we humble ourselves is actually through fasting. When you humble yourself before God, you become a priority. It says he exalts the humble. Fast, seek the Lord relentlessly. For 21 days he prayed and fasted. Humble yourself before God. His air, his, your prayers are coming. Keep waiting. Understand the spirit realm. Understand what we're fighting against. Understand what your prayers are fighting through and continue to pray. Number three, make sure you are doing God's will. Make sure you are doing God's will for your life. God, he will not, he will not do anything for you outside of his will, but his prayers, are, his answers are yes and amen. So it might not come in the form that you want it, but your prayer is coming. Someone say hallelujah. He said, this is what Ephesians 5, 6, 15 through 16 says, or through 17. He says, see then that you're walking circumspect, circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Sorry, I don't know that word. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. So Paul is saying, walk wise, not as unwise because the days are evil. Make sure you're doing the will of God. Make sure you're not walking as unwise. Making sh make sure your decisions all glorify God in his being and in his glory. If you're, if you're, so if you're spending more time watching Netflix than praying or fasting or reading, I'm sorry, you, you might not be walking wise or walking in the will of the Lord. Does God want you to be doing that? I want to remind you something. Your, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Are you making the Holy Spirit see things or watch things or do things that he doesn't want to do? Because I promise you, you will have more favor on your life if you do things that glorify God. And you are doing things that the Holy Spirit wants you to be doing. Are you filling your temple with filth? Are you watching pornography? Are you filling your, your temple with filthy music, dirty things, un, just unclean things all the time? Because I promise you, if you're walk, walking in the will of God, these things shall follow you. Good things shall follow you. You shall live a blessed life. John 10.10 10 says that I've come to give life and my life more abundantly. We are, Jesus died so we could have the blessing of Abraham over our life. Are you walking in blessing? Are you walking in the will of God? Make sure you are doing the will of God. He says, therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Ask the Lord today, what is your will for my life today? Am I walking in your will? Am I walking in your will today, Lord? Do you want me to be doing this? Do you want me to be washing this? Do you want me to be hanging out with these people? Are these people people that you've put into my life? Am I supposed to be working here? Evaluate your life. Lord, is there anything I can sacrifice? Is there anything that I can lay down? Paul says to be a human sacrifice. Be a sacrifice. Solomon and David, they used to sacrifice in the temple, but now you're the temple of the Holy Ghost. You're supposed to put yourself on the altar. Someone say hallelujah. Are you putting yourself on the altar? Luke 9.23 says, let, if anyone wants to follow me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross daily and follow me. Are you doing your own will? Or are you doing the will of the Spirit?
Are you walking in the Spirit today? According to Galatians 5.16, are you walking in the Spirit? Number four, the Lord's promises are yes and amen. See, God, God said, Jesus said, whatever you pray for in my name, I will give to you. And that's not a lie. It says in Numbers 24, it says, God is not a man that he should lie, not a son of man that he should repent. But sometimes we pray for things that are outside of God's will. But this is what he says, for all the promises of God and him are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. So oftentimes when we pray for something, God doesn't say no. He says no. He, he says, he doesn't say no. He says, I have something better. Or he says, yes, that's my will for you. So if I pray for like this drink, it, might, it may be empty. This bottle might be empty, but he might not have another one for me, right? So sometimes he can say, he doesn't say no, but he says, I have something better for you. So if I ask for something, hmm. so if I ask for a new Bible, because I need a new Bible. Okay, so I'm going to tell a story. So in California, and it's interesting because it's, it's actually how I got this Bible. Um, something happened in my Bible. I, the Lord had been pushing me to give it away um, to a man that was homeless. So I gave away my first Bible to somebody. And the Lord said, I said, Lord, how am I going to have a Bible now? How am I going to have a Bible now? And he said, just trust me. And so we were on the bus. We are going to the zoo, actually. And um, I heard this thing, and it said 19. And I said, Lord, what does that even mean? He said, it'll make sense later. Just trust me. And so uh, later on, I looked up a Christian bookstore, if there was any Christian bookstores in California at the time. I was on vacation there because I needed a new Bible. And... Uh, so we found this Christian bookstore and we had to ride the bus because we didn't have a car there at the time. And so when we got out of the car or we, when we got out of the bus, we actually got off at 19th Street. And that's where I got my Bible on 19th Street. I walked down 19th Street and got my Bible. So sometimes when we're asking for something better, God will actually have us give something up in order to give something better. God wants to make room in your life for things that are better, but sometimes you have to toss out the things that are bad. See, when you take out the garbage, you have to actually take out, if you have a full garbage, you have to actually take it out so you can put more in it. Some put, not like better things, but you can put more in it. Number four, uh, number five, remain faithful. He wants to bless you. God wants to bless you. God's promises, again, are yes and amen. So we're gonna look at, 2 Timothy 2.13. And this is what it says. It says, Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they may also, this is verse 10 through 13, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is the faithful saying, for if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful because he, can, he cannot deny himself. God cannot deny himself. Remain faithful because God remains faithful. God called us to have an abundant life. That's what he says in John 10.10. 10. He says this over and over again. Jesus says it is more blessed to give than receive. But how can you give something if you don't have anything to give? Hallelujah. God wants to give you abundant life. Endure. Endure because he endured. We shall also reign with him, if, but if you deny him and his blessings, he shall also deny you. But if you remain faithful, he remains faithful in your life. It's James 4, it says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Draw near to you. Remain faithful. These are the first five steps. And you need to remind these things and read these scriptures when you feel down. Seek him in prayer. Fast. Make sure you're doing God's will in your life. The Lord's promises are yes and amen. Remain faithful in God. He wants to bless you. God does not like holding with, withholding things. It actually, he loves actually doing things in your life because you know what happens when you have a miracle or something happen in your life? You automatically bless God. You automatically, not, you don't bless God, but you glorify God in your life. He loves being glorified in your life. He wants to bless you. He's not withholding good things from you on purpose. He's just making sure he gets the credit for it. Someone say hallelujah. God is not withholding things from you. He wants to give you good things. 
but he also wants you to store bridges in heaven. He wants you to, he, he wants you to trust him in all things. So sometimes we have to endure through hard things in order to obtain the things that Christ really wants in our life. It's about waiting. Be patient. See, John 10, 10, it says, The thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. So he wants to have not just abundant life, but life more abundantly. But the devil wants to steal your joy. He wants to steal your happiness. He wants to steal the things that God has blessed you with. And so this is what it says in Romans eight seventeen. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Joint heirs. So when you're an heir with someone, you have what they have. You have the riches that they have. And if indeed we suffer with them, that we may also be glorified together. So when Christ was glorified, we were also meant to be glorified with him. He left his riches so we could have the riches that he deserved. We're joint heirs with Christ if we walk in Christ, if we are part of Christ. See, he's the head, but we're the body. And my head can't go anywhere without the body. My body can't go anywhere without the head. We're joined together with Christ. So whatever the riches that he deserved, we have now. But look at the riches in heaven. Worry about the riches in heaven. This is what it says in Matthew 6, 31 through 34. Someone say hallelujah. I hope someone's taking notes. It says, therefore, do not worry. What shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear for all the thing, these things that Gentiles seek? For your heavenly father knows the things that you need for that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God. And this goes back to Psalms 27. Seek first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So when you seek the kingdom of God, these blessings will come to you. God wants to bless you over and over and over again. He wants to glorify himself in you. But you have to wait. You have to seek God relentlessly, diligently. And I can say that this is true in my life. Seek diligently the kingdom of God and all these things will come upon you. I promise. Jesus says it. So I know it's true. This is what it says in Romans 5, 1 through 6. And then I'm going to tell a story. Should be interesting. Therefore, having been justified by faith, faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we used to be at war with God. Our flesh is at war with God. It says that our flesh is an amenity towards God. Because it wants to sin. So we, now we have peace with God. You're at peace with God now. See, God used to fight against you. He used to fight against you. Can you imagine that? God fighting against you, that's terrifying. But it says we have peace through God, through Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Through whom also we have access by faith into his grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of, glory, in the, of the glory of God. And not only that, we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given to us. For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. So hope, hope in God does not let us down. God is not someone who lets us down. God is not a God that he sh he's not a man that should lie. God doesn't ever let us down. You, I, you can't name one time that God has ever let you down. Someone write down in the comments one time. There's not going to be a single comment. God is not someone who, who lets you down. You may you may be feel let down for a moment, but your glory is coming. Your reward is coming. Your believe, your your blessing is coming. I promise. I, I promise. So all these things, if you take these five steps, you will persevere, just like what Romans five says. Persevere. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Your blessing is coming. I promise. Just keep waiting. Keep waiting on the Lord. Isaiah 40, 31. We're not waiting on someone who's, 
who's slow to respond. We're just, he's making sure that we're being patient, that we glorify him in the things that he gives us. And sometimes he gives us things to handle, like little things. He says, to, th- to those who can do good things with little, I'll give much more. And that's, that's the Thomas version of that. That's not the exact um, memorization of the scripture. So, um, if you haven't seen, and I don't know where you're watching this from, but if you haven't seen, um, I posted something on my Instagram at uh, Thomas underscore Orton, or Thomas Orton underscore seven, and I posted something on TikTok um, about TikTok, and I felt like the Lord was um, asking me to make a TikTok. Um, I've been waiting for a long time, not for a long time, I've been waiting for a while. Um, the Lord has been having me post every day for three, four months now, and I haven't really seen a lot of progress. And I, I made two videos on TikTok, and both of them now have over a thousand views, and that's more than all my YouTube videos combined, praise the Lord. Um, and it was just, I just, when I saw that, I started crying, because I've been waiting for a long time. I've had people in my life tell me, you need, to get, you need to figure yourself out. You need to do this. They've always been supportive, but um, the numbers and the there was no really, um, there was no outward show of what was going on and the progress that I was making spiritually. Uh, so it's it was just really encouraging. I've been waiting for four or five months. I'm like, Lord, when is this coming? My, my family has been struggling financially. I think everybody is struggling financially right now. Um, so just seeing that I know the Lord's going to provide he, he told me he gave me a word and he said this is your blessing season I'm going to bless you now so I've been making uh, videos 3-4 months um, just waiting on the Lord to provide just making a way when there's no way and I've been having visions of cameras, live streaming I've seen all these things um, and I'm just waiting for God's promises so I'm waiting as well I'm waiting as well I'm waiting for a lot of things, but I know that God is faithful and I'm going to use these steps. I've been using these steps. I've been seeking God because I know promises of God are yes or amen and amen. So when you wait on the Lord, things start happening. You start, not that I'm saying, I'm not saying that if you're in my situation, I'm not saying that this is going to happen exactly, but it takes a lot of sacrifice. It takes a lot of obedience and then you start seeing it. But even... The thing is, is that we can't get caught up in the things that we see, but we have to keep our eyes on the things which are unseen because I know those things don't satisfy me, but I know that it's a showing of God's faithfulness in my life. God wants to reward you, but he also wants you to be faithful. He's not going to give you things that you can't handle. Um, I thought it was going to go on a little longer with that story, but, uh, praise the Lord. Um, but wherever you're watching, um, if you want to support the ministry, I'm going to put it in the comment section. So if you could support, that would be great. Um, so we can get better equipment. <laughs> so we can get better equipment, other things like that. So we could donate to other uh, organizations and ministries, praise the Lord. Um, and just do greater things for God. Um, so if you want to donate, if you want to support the ministry, um, that would be great. Uh, I love y'all so much. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. Praise the Lord. And uh, yeah. (laughs)